What up, y'all? It's your guy Dawson from D&D TV. Thank you for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Everybody who's donated, those of you all who will, everything goes back into the channel. Also, make sure you go over to my other YouTube channel, Dawson Speak TV. Please subscribe over there. And when you subscribe, hit that little bell right there next to the subscribe button so you get the notification when my videos come out. Now, let's get into this topic. All right, now this story is coming out of Bluefield, West Virginia. Bluefield. And it says, a pastor of a Bluefield church has been charged with the sex crime involving a 25-year-old mentally incapacitated man, according to the Bluefield Police Department. Pastor, apostle, Anderson H. Martin II of Bluefield was indicted on third-degree sexual assault and second-degree sexual abuse last week by a Mercer County grand jury. Pastor Martin is the pastor of greater tabernacle faith apostolic church now according to the bluefield police department detective sergeant kl adams said that the male victim is 25 years old however he has the mental capacity of a 10 to 12 year old wow really pastor now, the incident involving the charges occurred when the defendant picked the victim up at his residence to so-called take him out, according to the criminal complaint. Uh, the victim and his family thought that the pastor was taking the man to play video games or to go shopping. Instead, Pastor Martin took the victim to his residence where he... Well, I'm not going to even say what Pastor Martin did when the victim came to his residence. I'm going to let Pastor Martin tell you what he did in these news clippings. And you all let me know down in the comment section if you believe him or not. And I'm coming back with the rest of my commentary. Anderson H. Martin II is the pastor of Greater Tabernacle of Faith Apostolic Church. And he's been ordered to appear in circuit court on Monday. Court documents say Martin faces charges of sexual assault in the third degree and sexual abuse in the second degree, this for an incident involving a 25-year-old man. Martin shared his thoughts on the situation with our Jennifer Roberts, as did some neighbors. I was shocked. Very shocked. I think it's sad. I didn't know it was that close. Court documents state Martin committed sexual assault by unlawfully engaging in sexual intercourse and oral intercourse with a man described as physically helpless due to mental illness. Martin rolled up on me today at the church denying the charges. Whether uh, something was done to the individual, uh, I can't say who did it. All I know is I know I didn't do it. Is there any truth in any of these complaints? Did you do anything that's written in any of this paperwork? No. There's no truth. Yes. Uh, I invited him to my home to take a bath. My wife was there with me to take a bath, to take a shower. Yes, but did I physically put my hands on him? The only time that I'll say this part right here, the only times that I put my hands on him was he had his hair overgrown. And I, give, I edged him up, edged him up with uh, my, my razor, and that was because I didn't want him to cut himself with because I used to spray razor. The neighbors say the situation puts a dim light on the community, but they hope to see brighter days soon. Praying for everybody that was involved, everybody. I mean, such a sad story, but we'll know every day when the truth come out. Here for you in Bluefield, Jennifer Roberts, WVVA News. Martin is expected to appear in front of Judge William Sadler on Monday in circuit court for his arraignment. Meanwhile, so, a local pastor is charged with sexual assault of a mentally disabled man. 59 News reporter Caroline Forback confronted the man about the allegations against him. Pastor Anderson Martin denies allegations that he sexually assaulted a disabled person. No wrong whatsoever. If, if I've done some wrong, it could be that I tried to be a more loving, caring pastor. Anderson Martin was indicted on sexual assault and sexual abuse charges by a Mercer County grand jury last week. The victim is 25 but has the mental capacity of a 10 to 12 year old. He told officers Martin took him to his home, undressed and showered him. While in the shower, the victim says Martin asked for inappropriate favors. When he came home, he had different clothes on and everything else. And first thing I asked him, did something happen? He said yes. And I listened to what he had to say and I called the cops. Documents state a sexual assault kit revealed the victim was sexually abused. I found Martin at the church where he would interact with the victim on a weekly basis and asked him his response to the possibility of physical evidence against him. 
know whether uh, something was done to the individual. Uh, I can't say who did it. All I know is I know I didn't do it. Martin calls himself a man of God and claims he was only trying to help the victim. He denies acting inappropriately. I invited him to my home to take a bath. My wife was there with me to take a bath, to take a shower. Yes, but did I physically put my hands on him? The only time that I'll say this part right here, the only time that I put my hands on him was he had his hair overgrown. And I give I edged him up, edged him up with uh, my, my razor, and that was because I didn't want him to cut himself with it. The victim's caretaker tells us he attended Martin's service at the Greater Tabernacle of Faith Apostolic Church in Bluefield every Sunday. The victim's caretaker wants to see Martin behind bars. He put his, uh, his trust in him so much, and then he turned around and did that to him. Uh, you know, I want to see him go to jail. Reporting in Mercer County, Caroline Forback, 59 News. All right, y'all, let's go in. Now, first of all, before we go in, I just wanted to say to the neighbors, they were tripping me out. The ones who were like, oh, I think this is sad. And the other one was like at the barbershop, you know, I didn't know it was this close. <laughs> and then the lady at the end who was like, you know, I just pray. I just pray. It is so funny to me because that's the common response from a lot of people whenever there's any type of sexual molestation, any type of situation where the pastor has uh, done anything like adultery or anything in the church, not only with pastors, with leaders or with anybody in religious institutions. It's always, you know, we didn't know it was happening. We're going to pray. But see, we're in a day now that not only are we going to pray, we're going to prosecute the people who did these acts on the victims. That's where we are now. And I know a lot a lot of you all get mad and you're in the comments and how do you know and oh it's attack on this person no this is not an attack on anybody what's happening now in the universe is that all these cases from from years and decades ago people have been raped and molested and victimized in religious institutions and now all of it is just coming to a head and we are faced with those victims many who are now in their 60s 70s some are in their 80s and some are our age and you know in the 30s and maybe in the 20s and stuff like that and people are speaking out this is not the generation where we are going to sit back and run around the church and say pray and let god handle it nope we got power, authority, and dominion to handle those things here on the earth. And it's high time that we start exercising it. Now, let's get into this. Now, according to the criminal complaint, and you all heard Pastor Martin say in the news clipping that he uh, showed the man how to wash his body. That's why he invited him over to the house. He wanted to show him how to shower. He wanted to show him how to wash every part of his body, including his genitals. But Martin denied ever touching the man. Now, uh, according to the sexual assault examination that was performed on the victim, it showed signs of penetration. Wow. During the uh, police investigation, um, the detective Sergeant Adams stated that he and other members of the Bluefield Department were called to the victim's guardian's house because the guardian that you all saw on that video, once he called the police, I guess the police, they weren't coming fast enough. And he got a bat and he started walking towards uh, Pastor Martin's church because he was going to fight Pastor. Well, he was going to knock him out with that bat. Now, when I first heard this, I was like, well, you know, you know, that's the guardian, that's the caregiver. And then when I was reading more into it and I heard Pastor Martin's um, uh, video clip right there, it made me think, Pastor Martin, you are a pastor, a married pastor. As you stated in that video, your wife was home when you told the man to take a shower. Here's my thing to you, Pastor Martin. Why would you as a man go to another uh, man who is mentally disabled, go to his home, his, he already has a home. Why are you picking this man up to show him how to wash himself? That made you look so guilty. If I was you, I would have just went in that church and shut the door. I wouldn't have even done this interview because you're telling me that you told this victim's caregiver and family members that you were taking him to play video games and to go shopping. Pastor want to go shopping. Pastor, see, Pastor taking all the money going shopping. And he was going to do a good deed. But some kind of way between going to play video games and shopping with this 25-year-old mentally disabled man, you made a detour to your home to show him how to take a shower. 
Pastor, that is the silliest thing I ever heard. That's why the grand jury did what they did. And you're to face, go back in front of the judge on Monday because based on the rape kit and the fact that you lied to the caregiver and this man's family members telling him them that you're taking him to play video games and to go shopping, they know something happened in your home or while this victim was with you. And another thing, I want to know how does your wife feel about this whole situation and the fact that you're being charged with this and the results of the rape kit that showed that this man had signs of penetration and basically while he was in your care. How does your wife feel? I want her to come out and say something because the first lady is always hiding in the back and all this kind of stuff. I want to know how she feels. And I also want to ask the women on this YouTube, my subscribers and viewers, how would you feel if you were married to a pastor and he went to a 25 year old mentally disabled man's house who has the capacity of a 10 to 12 year old. He brings them back to your house while you're there, supposedly while you're there and tell and shows this man in the bathroom with him how to shout himself now I know some of you would try to you know rationalize it and oh maybe the man didn't know he knew the man has been on this earth for 25 years the man has a caregiver and family members the pastor went to the man's house to pick him up to take him shopping and to play video games Nothing was said to the caregiver or to the people there that the pastor was going to take this mentally disabled man to his house to show him how to wash his genitals. That makes you suspect as hell, bruh. You tell the caregiver, if you see the, 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 I'm, I want to say client, but if you see the victim is looking, he's not well groomed and you may have some, you know, some issues with how his physical appearance is as far as how he's dressed and how he's groomed. You talk to the caregiver or family members about that. I don't understand. I don't understand how you put yourself in this situation. And I want to know women on my, how would you all feel about that? What would your response be if your husband, the pastor is accused of this? And now there's a rape kit that was performed on this man. And there are signs of penetration. And this man, just because he has the mental capacity of a 10 to 12 year old, a 10 to 12 year old can talk. They can tell what happened to them and who did what to them. They know what's going on. Pastor and some of you other people in leadership and re religious institutions, I don't even know how, how y'all keep putting y'all self in these situations. I really don't. And then this whole thing about, oh, y'all just exposing people or you hate the church. No, we don't. We hate hypocrisy. And the hypocrisy in this, and a lot of y'all going to say it in the video, is that the pastor is gay or the pastor is bisexual. So he got somebody who was mentally disabled, who physically is a tw has a 25-year-old body, but the mentality of a child. That's what, I mean, that's how it seems to us. That you are, that a lot of people, in the people in positions of power, let me say that. You prey on the elderly, the disabled, the children. It, it is really sad to me. That there were people in a comment section on a, on a news clipping I was watching who was defending the pastor. Oh, these are just allegations. Oh, this is not real. You don't know. Well, the grand jury indicted this man real quick. And based on the rape kit, the victim's testimony and the guardian and the people who were in the home who said this man was with the pastor during that time. And you heard the guardian say when this man came home, he had on new clothes. It's just too much going on in this particular case. And pastor, you making yourself sound guilty. All of this stuff. Oh, I never touched him. Oh, but yeah, I did teach him how to shave and I, I showed him how to, you know, because his hair was here and all this kind of stuff. And the whole thing, you are a grown man inviting, even though he's mentally disabled with the mental capacity of a 10 to 12 year old and he lives with his guardian. I just want to keep saying that because we have these, you know, these religious zealots in the comments, the holy rollers. They're going to take up for the pastor. He can molest 15 kids, but that's still my pastor. <laughs> This man lived with a caregiver. You could have told the caregiver if you had a problem with this pastor. And the fact you just made yourself look totally guilty that you asked this man to come to your house to take a shower. Come on, brah. Y'all look out for the elderly. Look out for the mentally disabled. Look out for the children. Look out for the people who have physical disabilities. And look out for each other. 
because these predators are on the loose everywhere, not just in religious institutions, and they don't care. A lot of them are only in positions of power, as I tell you all on every video, to act out their sexual deviant behaviors. And they don't care who it is. And for you people in these churches and all these videos that are popping up and all this stuff that is coming out and people in the neighborhood, let me tell y'all something. That is your witness. Y'all can say, oh, well, you know, hey, they human too. They human too. Now, when it comes to you done cheating and stuff like that, I get that. But when you raping people and molesting people and you have a pattern of doing this or you plan this mess out like this pastor did, because you plan this out, because if you told the family that you were going to play video games and go shopping with this 25 year old mentally disabled man, that's what you should have did. You plan this out. And in the news clipping, I don't know if you all heard the uh, one the reporter was said that she talked to the pastor and the pastor said the man comes here every Sunday. They have a, a friendship, a relationship. So you took your time to groom this man well enough that you could get his caregiver and family members to trust you to take him from his place to go shopping and to play video games so you can make your move. Because you thought, oh, he's mentally disabled, uh, and he ain't going to talk, he ain't going to say nothing, I could deny it. he, you know, they are, you know, these people think this stuff out. And the sad thing is, is there are a lot of people in religious institutions, in other organizations, that they're using their position of power to prey on people. P-R-E-Y, y'all know that. Y'all look out for yourself. Don't be afraid to speak up. If something happens to you or your family members, your husband included or your sons because they going after them. It seems like they want the men more than they want anybody. <laughs> Y'all speak out. These people who hide in the church, they hiding behind their sexuality. They hide what they really are. Oh, my God. God, it's a, a video after video, story after story. And y'all say, oh, well, the wife didn't. Did some of these women know. Now, I was trying to hold back, but y'all better wake the hell up. Some of y'all know. Y'all know what's going on. And some of y'all stay in these marriages where you know this man is cheating on you because you like the status. You like being the first lady. You like where you live at. You guys have a nice little mansion here, or a mini mansion, or a good house. You got a townhouse over in uh, L.A. Or you got a condo up in New York. Y'all like the status. And so when people are saying, why is she still there? Or why is he there? Don't he know she cheating on him? I don't feel bad no more because some people know. Some people don't, but there are others who do. And they stay in those situations because they looking at y'all like, so what? I'm going to come down on your love and be like you. I got a house. I got a mansion here. I got a, we got a condo in New York. What? Uh, we got a townhouse over in LA. You think I'm going to come down to your status? Yeah, he cheat. Yes, yeah, she cheat. But I can handle that because it's really not a marriage to me. It's more about the material things. It's a financial move. Matter of fact, some of this stuff is just a business agreement because there's no way that this first lady going to still be married to this man after this all this come out. Because any, any woman with common sense would have some kind, type of uh, question, any good sense would have some type of questions about this. And the first thing a woman should know is that if he has a caregiver and you go into his house to pick him up, why are you teaching this man how to shower? I just can't get over that, Pastor. I just can't get over that. I'm sorry, I can't get over that. And I think I feel a little passionate about this story is because when I first came to South Florida, I worked with clients who had developmental disabilities for almost two and a half years and never one time did we have to bathe those clients. You a damn lie, Pastor. You know what you are, you know what you tried to do and the jury gonna take care of you. The judge gonna take care of you. The law is gonna handle you. All right, y'all. Now I'm going to go ahead and get off this subject because I see myself getting, you know, I feel myself rather getting uh, amped up about it. And it's making me upset. Uh, and this is not a bashing video. I'm not bad. Whatever the pastor is, whatever his struggles are with everything, we know he's a predator. But whatever he is, his wife knows about that. And maybe she has her own. Maybe they're reformed. You know, the church love these reformed marriages, these ex-gay marriages. These She used to be a lesbian. She used to be gay. Not they come together and it's a it's a testimony so you know maybe that's what their church is one of them churches that just a testimony and pastor if you had a backslid uh, in a backslid moment 
Do that with somebody who has the mental capacity just like you. Don't take advantage of a 25-year-old mentally disabled man who has the mental capacity of a 12 to 10-year-old. You are a predator in that case. And that's how this whole thing is coming out. That's how it's coming out. That's how the law sees it. And that's why you're going to be in front of the judge come this Monday. And they basically they're going to throw the book at you for this. Because all fingers are pointing at you to what happened to this mentally disabled man. You all be truthful with yourself. Be truthful in these relationships. Don't let the church and people push y'all to get married. I'm telling y'all, look, y'all take care of yourself and each other. I don't even want to go on with this topic. There's been so much coming out coming out about these pastors and gospel singers and all this stuff. And I get the videos y'all send to me. Y'all, y'all, y'all better do right. That's all I can say. Take care of yourself and each other. Go off in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this topic. Until next time, take care of yourself and each other. And if you have any, uh, if you all want to submit your questions or any advice that you want from Denise or myself, please hit our email up at DawsonDeniseTV at Yahoo.com. Peace.